Good morning! I know it's cold and all, but let's see if we can get a good hearty good morning. Good morning! morning. Woohoo! We're, we're awake here in Caribou, Maine this morning on this chilly October morning. But nonetheless, God is here, and as surely as we're getting breaks of sun, the Spirit of God is here with us this day. Would you join with me in the spirit of prayer? Holy and gracious God, in these unusual times, we are grateful nonetheless to be able to gather to worship and honor you with our presence, our prayers, our worship together, whether we are present here around this garden or watching online today. We thank you that you have come and dwelt among us that we might be able to walk in your ways. Come to us in this time of worship, we pray. Surround us with your grace. Fill us with your spirit so that we can go into the rest of our week determined to bring that same spirit to everyone we see and meet that all might know the love of God because of the love you have shown to and through us. Meet us here in this time of worship and most importantly, help us meet you to receive your word and to be receptive to your spirit this day we pray in jesus name amen tomorrow has our scripture reading for us this morning scripture reading comes from Philippians chapter 4 verses 3b through 14. It is from Paul's letter to the church in Philippi, which was a city in Macedonia, today's modern Greece, where the first Christian church established by Paul on European soil was. He has several points in this fairly short reading, but many, many pieces of advice it, like he likes to give. Um, some of these pieces of advice include the tail end of healing breaches where he says all must work together because no person can be at peace with God and at the same time at variance with other people. He reiterates two qualities of the Christian life. He reminds the peace of believing prayer and sets one's mind, reminds people sets one mind on right things, the true teaching and the true God. And this leads to the secret of true content. Help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything and everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to god and the peace of god which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in christ jesus finally beloved whatever is true whatever is honorable whatever is just whatever is pure whatever is pleasing whatever is commendable if there's any excellence and if there's anything worthy of praise Think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned for me, but had no opportunity to show it. Not that I am referring to being in need, for I have learned to be content with whatever I have. I know what it is to have little. I know what it is to have plenty. In any and all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being well-fed and of going hungry, of having plenty and being in need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. In any case, it was kind of you to share my distress.
Good morning. I figured for our last Sunday in the garden, um, that would be an appropriate song to sing. So I'm singing in the garden. I, I will tell you, I might be editorializing the lyrics just a little bit. So um, you'll hear the differences. I come to the garden with friends while the dew is still on the roses and the voice we hear falling on our ears the son of god discloses and he walks with us and he talks with us and he tells us we are his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known he speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to we within our heart is ringing and he walks with us and he talks with us and he tells us we are his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known we'll stay in the garden with him though the night around us be falling but he bids us go through the voice of woe his voice to us is calling and he walks with us and he talks with us and he tells us we are his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever Thank you very much, Chris. That indeed was very appropriate and fitting for this last Sunday in the garden, at least for 2020. I was telling Elena before the service that uh, it takes a windy day to take a little of the wind out of the pastor, perhaps, but I know that we don't want you all to go home frozen popsicles. So I want to jump right into the message. We continue in our series uh, throughout this year, and we are working our way through Paul's letters, not necessarily strictly speaking in chronological order, but thematically. And we come to this passage that for many of you is well known, this admonition to rejoice in the Lord always, and again, we say rejoice. What does it mean to be people who rejoice in the Lord, especially in times like this? I would reflect on that with you after we first pray. Holy and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts together 
Be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. One of those activities that I enjoy doing from time to time is to go out on a clear night, whatever the season, and look up in the sky and see what I can see. And even in the middle of caribou, usually, even on a, uh, even with a lot of light around, it's not so much that I can't see the stars. Uh, and sometimes if it's, a, if it's a good night, I can see some planets, uh, often the moon, of course, and occasionally these days a satellite or two mixed in for good measure. But in many parts of our world, and especially in uh, North America and also in Europe, a lot of those kinds of sites are disappearing. According to the International Dark Sky Association, a lot of that light at night that blocks out the sky not only ruins the view, but is unnecessary. Their estimate is over $2.2 billion a year in electricity that isn't needed really, or, or that could be curtailed. Uh, but that has the added effect besides the cost of uh, polluting the sky. And what does that pollution do? Uh, in many cases, it can be glaring. I won't mention where, but you probably can know, uh, remember or notice some places you're going down, maybe Route 1, where you come around a corner and there's bright light in your face, and it's not because of headlights, and it's not because of a driver, it's because of light along the side of the road. Visually, you can be uh, uncomfortable. You can see it in the sky glow, uh, especially where there are cities. I can often tell if I'm driving at night when I'm getting close to my to the next city along the way by the glow in the sky. Um, there's all kinds of clusters of lights, whether from signs, street lights, headlights, interior lights. We have lights uh, all over. And these lights not only ruin the view, they can actually affect our health. The American Medical Association suggests that uh, for those of us uh, who tend to be night owls, the extra light can affect our circadian rhythm and affect the way our, our body actually responds to what should be natural rhythms of, of day and night, of light and dark. But beyond the actual light sources around us, there are other kinds of sources of energy in our, in our life. There are the energies that come from our families and our friends, the energies that come from our places of work, uh, maybe a, a supervisor or a co-worker or colleague. There are sources of energy that come from different organizations in our society, and you see that particularly loudly now in this uh, election season with a number of different organizations advocating for one position or another or one particular candidate or another. But sometimes these other sources of light, like overly bright headlights or unnecessary light along the road or unnecessary light in the center of town, uh, can help us actually lose our way. Think about Paul for a minute. As he was saying these words, he was not just writing down, sitting down at his desk to write a letter. He was not just uh, kicking back in his easy chair to think about what he was going to say to a couple of people not getting along in a church. He was writing. Uh, he was writing at, at some threat to his life. He was writing from prison. This was not a good, I think most of us would think, setting to be in. And yet he's still able to say rejoice. And not only rejoice, but rejoice in the Lord always. Always in the Lord rejoice. How could he have such a positive outlook? How could he always have such a hopeful vision? talked a little bit about this uh, earlier this uh, a couple of weeks ago 
about it, it's really important to remember that we have so often con con uh, confused happiness and joy. Happiness is the state we are in when things are going well. You've got a raise, you've got a promotion, uh, you celebrate the birth of a child, uh, your relationships are in a good place, uh, finances are in a good place. That tends to be the things that make us happy. But our joy, our joy is about understanding our security in the world. And as a Christian, our joy is in Christ. It's not about anything material. It's not about anything fleeting that we may have today and not have tomorrow. It's about being secure in our spirit, not complacent or not a take it easy because we've got it all made kind of way, but knowing that whatever may come, God will see us through. God will be present with us through it. And because of God's promises, both for this life and the one to come, we have so much to look forward to. It's why people who seemingly have not a penny to their name can be seemingly so joyful so often. People who, we might say there's a lot going wrong with their life, can be in seemingly such a good place because by the world's definition, they may have all the reason to be unhappy. They have all kinds of reasons through their faith to be joyful. We very often too in our life spend a lot of time worrying. I know this is something that I have to work out a lot. I worry a lot about often events I can't even control in the world, the well-being of my family, the well-being of my church family. But Paul helps us to see beyond the worry. And it's interesting, the word, the word that's translated here uh, around these ideas of rejoicing is the same word that on one hand could lead you to think about worry, but on the other hand can help you to think about a deep concern for someone. The way Paul puts it, worry is something that you uh, do that causes you internal upset, that often causes you internal pain or anguish. Uh, sometimes it's a very physical uh, manifestation. Sometimes it's very mental or emotional, but it's inside. But that same verb can mean a deep concern for somebody or something. As a Christian, we're called to have that kind of concern. And that, that line between worry and concern can be so thin. It can be so narrow. But it's your concern for somebody that might motivate you to see what you could do to feed them, or your concern about somebody that might motivate you to, to go and come to a city council meeting, or petition your senator or representative to take particular action. It's your concern about somebody that might motivate you to take a meal out to their home, or to send a card, or to ask what you can do to help. Our worries tend to paralyze us, often immobilize us, and cause us to seize up. But if instead of going down the path of worry, we go down the path of concern, genuine concern for another person, genuine concern for our fellow sister and brother, where we're motivated to an action. And how do we, when we come to that point of divergence, pick the the direction of motivated concern, it's following the light of Christ. There's a lot of pollution in our world, light pollution in our world. We are told to follow particular individuals, encouraged to worship at the altar of, whether it's consumerism, uh, at the feet of, uh, of personal charisma, and often these sources of light obscure the one that we as Christians are called to follow, that is, the person of Jesus. 
Now, Paul didn't have a lot of artificial light like we do. He didn't have a 24-7 news cycle that would constantly bombard him with all kinds of stories uh, from across the Mediterranean, never mind across the Atlantic or out to the Near East. But he had those sources that obscured faith and faithful full response to him. When he was still Saul, he was the man who persecuted the Christians. He did not see Jesus as a light in his life, but rather as a threat, something to worry about, something that was threatening. And on that Damascus road, his life was turned around. We might say he truly came to see the light. But his life was changed, and he became among the greatest advocates ever of the Christian faith at a time when it wasn't on much of anybody's radar screen and was a much smaller source of light than it is in the world today. So strong was his joy and so strong was his ability to see that light that even in prison, even when challenged by difficult theological questions that hadn't been worked out yet, and arguments among those early churches and early Christians, he could still proclaim rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Do not worry, as in the kind of worry that will seize up your life. Be concerned about the people that your faith will put you in, con in connection with. It would be so easy for us these, uh, in these days of uh, pandemic. It would be easy to be worried about the cases that have been identified in our community just in this past week. To become seized up by economic worry, as some of you have ha at your own businesses or your family and friends have watched dreams evaporate in these last eight months to worry about what the social turmoil in our country that goes far beyond an election season might mean for us, not just in the couple of weeks before November 3rd, but in the months to come. It would be easy to look at the challenges that our society faced even before all of that happened, whether it's about health care or the value of work or the changing nature of society and our roles in it, and so much more. And in the midst of that comes the voice that says, Rejoice. Rejoice. Not because necessarily everything is going right, or everything is as we would like it to be, or because everything is in a great place, or because everything is going to be all fine, we know not everyone is going to survive the pandemic, and we know not every business is going to make it. And we know we've got a lot of hard conversations to have to overcome what divides us as a society. But if we let our path be illumined by the one light, the light of Jesus, if we let our steps be guided by that light, if we can if you have to use night sh shades or blinders perhaps partially to block out those other lights, whatever those are for you, and I would encourage you to identify those lights that block out the light of Christ. Do what it takes to block those other lights that would keep you from seeing Jesus at work in your life, that would keep you from seeing Jesus at work in this world, that would keep you from following in Christ's ways. It's about so much more than saving $2.2 billion in electrical costs. It's about more than just having a beautiful night sky. It's about having our hearts illumined by the love of one who gave up himself so totally that he offered his whole life that we could have ours. 
and continues to walk with us so that even in our darkest days and darkest hours, we have no reason to lose hope, no reason to lose heart, and no reason to lose faith. Because our joy is not rooted as Christians in what we have or don't have, where we live or don't live, what we do or don't do, how beautiful our sanctuary is or isn't. It's rooted in our faith, our faith in Jesus. And sometimes with the weight of all that's around us, it seems like to some, like that's not, that's not enough. How can that be enough? We'll talk about this in a, in a, uh, later this month. But you recall the scripture that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Since our joy is not based on things going well, but having Christ in our hearts, then we can be hope. Hope for a world that could really use a good dose of it right now. Won't you be that hope in the world out of your genuine concern for your sisters and brothers, not just those gathered here and those you know are joining with us today online, but all the children of God, those across the street, those across town, those across the county and the state, and indeed around the world. Let us be hope, because when we are hope in the world, the light of Christ shines brighter. When the light of Christ shines brighter, there, then there is hope all the more for tomorrow and all the days to come. Let us pray together. Almighty God, we come to this garden, but we do not come alone. For we come with our friends, our friends in you. We come, some of us watching online, connected together by that faith, even though distance might otherwise separate us. And we rally around the light, the light that is you. It seems there is so much darkness in our world you remind us that sometimes we need a little darkness to see the light. As with the stars in the sky that we can only see when it is dark, sometimes it is in the darker hours of our lives we are reminded just how bright and warm and powerful your light, your presence, your grace really is. Help us live in that light, we pray. And help others through us to see and experience that very light. So it is in your name we pray. Amen. As we come to our time of prayer, I do have our list of prayer requests this morning. And at, uh, at the end of that, if you have additional prayers you would like to offer, or if you have joys this morning, I would invite you, if you can, uh, to use the microphone there just in the middle of the parking lot. It is on, so there is no, uh, no need to worry about turning it off or on to add any other prayer requests that you would have uh, today prayers please for the following persons for Debbie and Lou Sharp Emily Robin and James Stewart Dave Corvo Darlene Nelder Sheila Bellier Megan Cousins Phyllis Sykes Dave and Marcia DeMerchant Bob Sear Richard and Susan Clark 
Doris Jeffrey, George and Joyce Knorr, Ralph Ferguson, Martin Gallant, Marilyn and Gary Langley, Richard and Sally Card, for Brevin Barnes, who sustained a broken leg in a soccer game, for Brian Forbes, who is in Bangor and in critical condition after a car accident, for Zelma Merritt, and for Catherine and John David Clyburn in the restarting of in-person classes. Are there additional prayer requests or joys that you would like to lift up this morning? For a uh, neighbor of, of mine in Parham, whose uh, daughter is dying of cancer, the mother's name is actually the woman is uh, Gabriel uh, Ben Tefereth. We will keep your neighbor in our prayers for sure, Richard. Thank you. Any others this morning? One joy that I have, uh, we, except for going back to take the after pictures, uh, finished, uh, uh, well, finished helping Alden on his uh, Eagle Scout project this last week. I think something like 130 hours or so in the field have been done, roughly, and uh, with a few more to go, but uh, it's really been uh, quite an interesting project to be part of. Um, and some of you were part of that too, so a big thank you as well for lending your hands in that effort. If there are no others, then let us be in a spirit of prayer. God, we humbly come before you this day, lifting up these names that we have spoken with our lips, and further names that we have spoken in our hearts. We confess that we ourselves have not always followed in your ways. Sometimes we have mistaken our own standing, our own self as more important than you. Occasionally we have followed another light source or allowed light pollution to interfere with your bright shining star. And often the result of, of that is that ultimately the things of this world have disappointed. Whether it's because there's never enough money or enough things or enough time or enough of anything. But with you, in your generous gifts in this world, there is not only enough, life can overflow in abundance and richness. And in such a way that can help us cut through the interference, the pollution, the sources that would stand between us and you. We know following in your ways is not easy but we ask once more for your help that we might follow and go where you would have us so that others might know the joy that living with you is all about. It's in that joy, that joy, that we know we can be made complete because of what you have offered in your Son continuing work of the Holy Spirit, most especially in these times, unprecedented in so many ways, certainly in living memory, where everywhere we look is something that challenges a new norm or an old expectation or way of life, 
yet you call us to rejoice because of our faith nonetheless. It was not easy for those early Christians to, to follow, those early followers of your son Jesus. And yet, even when they could not see, even when they could not understand, even when indeed their life was potentially at risk, even when they fled, you did not abandon them. As you gave the example when you so patiently taught, we remember those words that you offered when you taught them to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom power, and the glory forever. Amen. Just a couple of announcements today. This is our last service here in the garden. Uh, next Sunday will be streamed online uh, at 10 o'clock. We'll be streaming from the sanctuary, but it will just be a couple of us uh, that are involved in the leadership of the worship. Uh, we expect that there will be some further uh, evolution of worship in the coming few weeks, so keep an eye on the November newsletter as well as your weekly uh, email that Bobby sends out for updates on, on worship. Uh, we know we'll be uh, in that mode uh, at least for a couple of weeks, and then we'll, f we'll figure it out uh, as both the church council and worship committee and probably the reopening task group uh, continues to do their work in the coming weeks. Are there other announcements this morning that should be made? As many of you have continued to send in your gifts um, and uh, your offerings, your tithes, uh, we do have the plates on the back table if you brought those with you today. Uh, just a huge thank you to all of you who continue to make our ministries possible. Uh, in, the, in these very strange times, uh, your gifts have continued to bring light uh, into Caribou uh, in a variety of ways. Uh, and let, I would invite us into prayer once more as we give thanks for all that God has given. Holy God, we thank you for the gifts you give, and we thank you for your generosity. Help us see that generosity in our own gifts the gifts of our time, the gifts of our talents, and the gifts of our treasure for your worship here and across the region, indeed across the country, from this place called Great Memorial United Methodist Church. For the ministries that continue to happen, whether it's in our education together, and our service in the community, and the knitting of prayer shawls, in the music that brings joy to so many ears and in a variety of other ways. For all this, we give you thanks. And we do so in the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. As we close this morning, and just uh, a big thank you to all who've made these services possible over these last uh, two and a half months now that we've been out here in the garden. It's been truly great also to see many of you in person um, after not uh, really being able to do that for several uh, several weeks. And I hope that it's not long before we uh, have, whether it's the means as a society or as a church, to be able to continue our ministries in person as well as in the unique ways we've been doing over these last, uh, well, almost eight months now. But as we go from this place, we do not leave one another behind, for each other's spirit goes with one another. Most importantly, we go with the light of our life, of Jesus. So go with the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go with the love of God and go with the Holy Spirit. Today, tomorrow, all the rest of this year and into 2021, 
and all our lives long. Amen.